friends today we are going around the city of london in a cruise it's an awesome journey you will see the most iconic building the famous london bridge tower bridge and lot of more action in the cruise normally the cruise around the city gives you a rare opportunity to see on the both side of the uh, city and as you know that most of the cities around the world were developed uh, around the great rivers so london is no exception a city of culture tradition fashion and each and every part of city is full of history this city was in existence from centuries and uh, this the seat of power of the longest surviving kingdom and this particular kingdom once owned half of the world in their pocket and they were saying in hindi british hukumat ka सूर्य कभी अस्त नहीं होता दैट मीन्स दैट इन ईच एंड एवरी टाइम जोन दे वॉज वन और द अदर कॉलोनी ऑफ ब्रिटेन टूडे river thames is comparatively a very clean river but it was not so uh, during uh, the past centuries the industrial base from industries tanneries fish market each and everything was dumped into the city uh, in, in sorry into the river but the city evolved and the river also evolved now the river is very clean and uh, you know and that the city receives drinking water also from uh, river teams to cruise around the central london is hop down from the westminster underground station and a nearby wharf is there from there you can buy a ticket which roughly costs around uh, 18 to 19 pound this ticket will entail you hopping on uh, as many places as you want and there is no time limit 6 o'clock uh, the cruise uh, stop their operation so as and when you want to uh, take around you you can get into any of the cru- cruise ship and go to the next stop
cruise ships normally accommodate 150 people and there are two decks if you want to enjoy the 360 degree view then uh, it is uh, advisable to go on the upper deck but if you want a cozy journey you can stay on the lower deck the passengers are served with tea coffee snacks and of course the hard drinks also the last cockpit building with the flashy billboard in the centre, that's our National Theatre, one of London's most premier theatres, it incorporates three separate ones within it, those being the Dorfman, the Littleton and the 1400 centre, Sir Lawrence Olivia. That building was once said to be by Prince Charles, the ugliest one by building he ever seen in his life. And that's now Prince Charles, he is definitely an expert among the Of course, I am talking about buildings. The door is in front of you is St. Paul Cathedral. As you see the long cranes, they are the symbol of the city is evolving. New buildings are coming, but the, the city administration, when it permits uh, construction of new buildings, it takes care that the city should not get a unbalanced uh, development. So all the new buildings normally sinks into the overall ethics of the city. That is the beauty of the city of London. The city is the actual square mile, and that archway there on your left hand side is the westernmost boundary line to it. That actually denotes the water's westernmost boundary. You've just passed it to the road behind. Either side of it, you'll see those two silver grippings. They denote the land side's westernmost boundary, and you'll find them at all four quarters of the entrances to the council system. Ahead of us to your right now, though, you'll see this large red brick building with a spire at the top. Look to the spire. You'll see the letters OXO. Well, you probably guessed it, that's when they used to make the famous little brown stock cubes to make the best gravy in the world. That's it, of course, you can get mad those little silver rabbits. Probably the headquarters for OXO. Now, you also going to mistake, you can't advertise the label, you can't believe all the rabbits on the banks of the tent. This is the closer to the front of the tent. I'm going to put the regular products into the spire at the top of the building. It's now been converted into pretty much what every other building you remember this today. You've got an expensive row of shops on the bottom, a luxury expensive restaurant at the top, and an unaffordable house in the And back to our left hand side, just behind the workings here, you'll see there's another red brick building, built in the Bolivian design. That's the old Zion College of Libraries, home to many rare and religious manuscripts, the most famous being Queen Victoria's own personal Bible, written on William Caxton's grace. London has one of the most efficient transport system in the world. It has got underground, it has got overground, it also has national rail and all uh, this makes life of city dwellers as well as tourists very easy. Sir Francis Bacon, Sir Isaac Newton, and the one on the far right with the football, probably the Gucci jacket, that's David Beckham. Of course, I'm only joking, we all know that David never went to school. That is, of course, really good shows. At this point of the river, though, we approach a place where there's three bridges very closely together. It's, in fact, the closest of any three bridges on the banks of the Thames. The first is the Black Friars Road Bridge. Look to the columns on it, you'll see they resemble the pulpits of a church. These will be here at the express wish of Queen Victoria to commemorate the old Blackfriars Monastery, which once took some on left hand side and was burned down under the order of King Henry VIII during the Reformation. Look through to the second bridge though, the one with the red You will see globe you see closer, you see it, it is also a centre of the city's culture and literature. The Shakespeare's plays are continuously running as this theatre. 
on the time of Shakespeare itself. And as we pass through it, take a little glance across London's skyline. You'll see it's ever changing. All the old historical buildings and places of real character are now being dominated by luxury skyscrapers, office blocks, and apartments. The prime example of this, ahead of a city of Rye, this large glass structure. That's now the new tallest building in Western Europe. It's called the Shard, built to resemble a shard of glass. It stands exactly 1,019 feet high. And when fully completed, it will be made up of lots of offices, a shopping centre, various hotels and luxury apartments. And also situated up on the 77th floor is a viewing gallery that costs 32 pounds to go visit. Again to your right home, the large brown brick building with a tall chimney in the centre. That's the old bank side power station, which 20 years ago was brought up and converted into the tank mob for art galleries. You can go in there and see such magical exhibits as art the camera and plastic box. for the Paris Church, and this is the latest edition in the series of Bridges and London. The dome is supported by 64,000 tons, and is the second largest unsupported cathedral dome in the world, the largest being that of St. Peter's in the past six years ago. And so our right, the white building with the flat screw pipes up, has the first wooden building to be built in the city since the Great Fire of London, the new dome by our spheres. It was the last work of Drake of the American actor and director from the borough line of San Paolo. He raised the funds and designed the plans for the project for Sandy, he died a couple of years before its completion. So his daughter, the actress, Sandy Rollmaker, the man of her programs like Love Hurts, My Family, featured also a few other films as well, which is the project for the girl who in fact is 22 years old in my life. And as you can see, folks, we're our first of our next stop, which is Bay Side, we're going to take off the supermodels to the boat. And in Washington, we can go to this point, make the way downstairs inside the lobby area by the house, which is the Bay Side. 